Hi there, I'm Amanda Cromhoed from Truth. Welcome to the Blind Loyalty Challenge. We interview world experts in loyalty blindly. We're hoping to create insight, spontaneity, and a lot of fun through the challenge. The challenge is about promoting the Blind Loyalty Trust and my book called Blind Loyalty, 101 Loyalty Concepts Radically Simplified. All profits from the book go towards the trust. We hope you enjoy the Blind Loyalty Challenge. For our next Blind Loyalty Challenge, I have the absolute honor today to chat to Oscar Rank. Now, Oscar is a loyalty and customer engagement expert based out in Canada, a long way away from where I'm based in South Africa. So we're on some good time zone differences here. So Oscar, welcome to the Blind Loyalty Challenge. Amanda, thank you for having me here. Absolute pleasure. So you were tagged by Leah Grimberg. So I don't know if you're friends or if she's picked on you for another reason, but welcome anyway. <laughs> well, she uh, she picked me for a good reason. I worked with her for Leah and um, we had a great rapport and we're both passionate about loyalty. So this is a great chance to kind of jump on here and do what I can do. Yeah, well, it's going to be a lot of fun. So don't worry. It's all just for good fun. So straight into it. So chapter 70 of blind loyalty is about grocery retailing loyalty so what is your favorite grocery retailer loyalty program oh i mean based in canada i think it would be easy for me to call out president's choice and pc optimum uh pc optimum is by almost definition now the largest loyalty program in canada um but i'm not calling it out exactly for that but rather for the great job that they've done at incorporating different coalition partners as part of their offering, um, incorporating financial products as part of their core offering, and really building out what I would consider a very diverse set of rewards and recognition opportunities for their customers. Um, so it's not just about collecting points, it's about everything else that the program is able to unlock for them. And what is truly nowadays one of the most important things that you would want to use loyalty points for, which is your everyday groceries. Yeah, yeah, of course. And it's so nice to hear you say they're not your favorite just because they're the biggest, because often like we just attach success to big. But the fact that you actually see the the real benefit back to customers and the breadth of what they've achieved. So thank you. Thanks for sharing that PC Optimum and President's Choice. So there's two goodies for us to go and research. So I think one of the hot discussions in grocery is around whether I've seen a lot of press recently around Tesco's and so forth in the UK. So do you think instant discounts, like points of sale discounts, differential pricing, or a build up to points works better? What do you think is more powerful? We discuss these in the book, actually. So chapter 46 and 47 debate this quite deeply. I think it would have to be a balance between both. And the reason why I think it has to be a balance, different customers react to different value propositions. There are some that are looking for the quick discount that are motivated to take action when they see the benefit that they can instantaneously unlock. And on the other hand, you have people who like to bank and collect points and build up for something far greater than you know a dollar off. Um, so when it comes to which one is better or which one you would recommend, to me, it's balancing both. It's if you if you pick too much on one side, you are leaving money on the table and an opportunity to engage your customers on the table by not offering that choice. Um, we are always asked to consider whether discounts are better than points when it comes to um, loyalty programs. To me, it comes down to also the price point at which you're applying it. If you are discounting uh, hard dollars on a large ticket item, uh, that's really compelling. If you're discounting dollars on a small ticket item, that is less compelling. And it's probably a better chance to kind of bank your points to, to something bigger. Yeah, absolutely. We actually put a question in our annual white paper that we released for the South African market. But the question is exactly that, like instantaneous discounts or build up for points. And interestingly, we had a three way split. How can I have a three way split against two questions? But it was equal 33% plus or minus of customers who want 
instant discounts, customers who want to build up for bigger rewards, and customers who want both. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly your point. Yeah, exactly that. Amazing. So my last question, this is probably the easiest of all, but it really interests me. So where do you go for loyalty inspiration? Where do you learn about best practice loyalty? Is it a business book? Is it podcasts? If so, which ones? Share us where you go. Um, It's a bit of a hodgepodge of opportunities. I find that, you know, books are able to greatly dive in depth as to what is happening at a particular, you know, problem, particular question. I find podcasts are very topical and very uh, on point to what's happening and what's seeing. Um, and then to me, it's when you, when you see reviews online uh, that customers are writing or industry experts are writing, it's also a great opportunity to peek under the hood and see what, you know, your customer is really saying, you know, word of mouth. Um, when I think about loyalty, to me, I do the Harper Business Review, and it's not just about loyalty, but I think about strategy. Loyalty is an arm of strategy that you might utilize. Um, so I'm a, well, my Spotify wrapped <laughs> campaign actually told me yeah. I'm in the top 3% worldwide when it comes to the Harper Business Review kind of loyalty okay. and strategy podcast. So uh, it seems that I'm consuming far more than the average Joe is out there. Uh, but to me, it's just an opportunity to kind of zoom out and think about strategy as a whole. And then how do you apply it on a loyalty value proposition or loyalty value chain to really drive the type of engagement and directions that you would need from your customers? Yeah, absolutely. That's cool. We all have a good Spotify rap at the end of the, in the it comes at the end of November, Genius. doesn't it? So, yeah, it's absolutely, I mean, the, the, the discussions I've loved is how actually if 99.9% .9 of loyalty companies could learn how to do that level of personalization, what a better experience all loyalty programs would be able to deliver. So great. I'm actually, I don't listen to Harvard Business Review on a podcast, so that's a goodie for me to take up and hopefully a goodie for everyone else listening to this. So, Oscar, thank you. Who would you like me to challenge next? Um, I would like to um, nominate Andras Lazar from BMO. Uh, he's the VP of credit cards. He's been within kind of financial services, the credit card business uh, for well over a decade. He was a great partner when I was part of the BMO team, uh, launching new credit card products. And he's now running the show. Um, so my nomination goes out to him. Hopefully he is up for the challenge. Yeah, wonderful. Is he also based in Canada? He's also based in Canada. So the time zone will work in your favor. Beautiful. I'm creating a new network of folks in Canada. I'm enjoying that. Oscar, thank you ever so much. You're a superstar and I like the insights into grocery retailing. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. I appreciate the time.